Hey folks, welcome. Here we discuss real stories by real people. Today we have the story of a man who finds out his wife has been cheating on him with a widower who his son calls dad. Let's see how it goes. Story 1. My STBX wife and I, both in our mid-30s, have a wonderful three-year-old son together and a six-year-old lab. I work in IT, so I make more than enough to support our lifestyle and feel comfortable with my wife being a stay-at-home mom. Because she's a stay-at-home mom, the majority of the housework and childcare falls on her. But this does not mean I don't pull my own weight when I'm home, evenings and weekends. I still help her out with cooking and cleaning, and of course spend quality time with my boy. Moreover, I often use my personal days to be a stay-at-home dad for a day, so that she can have a much needed and deserved break from her job. My STBXW often takes our son to group play dates throughout the week with her friend group, which consists of a mix of stay-at-home moms and dads. I have no issues with this because I'm not my wife's keeper, and it's great for our son's development to spend time with other children his age. Lately, I've noticed that her typical housework has fallen behind, and I've been coming home to a fairly messy house and an anxious, energetic pup. The dog's behavior has led me to believe that she's spending less and less time at home, and he's missing out on much-needed walks and other forms of exercise. I do take him on an evening walk, while my wife is expected to do the morning walk. I confronted her about this, and she admitted that she had been getting lonely during the day and spending additional time at a friend's house. She was kind of vague about the friend in particular, but I was more concerned about our dog and the state of our home at that moment. I asked her if she could spend a bit more time at home and make sure the dog gets exercised. She agreed, and we left it at that. The normal household chores and the dog's routine went back to normal for about a week or so after our conversation. At that point, she went right back to spending what I think was too much time at this friend's house. On top of this, my son had been babbling a lot of nonsense like Da's house. Well, I'm Da, and we're at home, buddy. I was aware that she spent time with stay-at-home dads as well as stay-at-home moms, and this had never bothered me until this moment. I remembered how vague she was regarding this friend during our last conversation, so at this point I was highly confident that this friend was a guy. Yesterday, I confronted her, and this time she was a bit more honest. She admitted that she was spending time at a male friend's house who was not a stay-at-home dad but a new widower. He has a son a few months older than ours, and it started out as my wife going over to babysit and help out while he worked part-time. I could have dealt with this. I think it's awesome to help others out when they need it. However, it was what she confessed to me next that I absolutely could not handle. This friend and my wife started to become a bit too friendly, and the boy started to bond quite a bit. This led to an emotional affair, which eventually turned into a physical affair. They were physical in front of my son, with absolutely no shame from this woman. This explained my son's apparent confusion about who his da was. After hearing this, I kicked her out of the house. I took today off as I needed to be home to take care of my son. And tomorrow my sister will be moving in temporarily to help out so I'll be able to work. Thankfully, I'm able to cut back on my hours a bit so my sister won't take over for my wife. This will be a temporary arrangement while I figure out my next move. I plan to make contact with a divorce lawyer as well. Update. I've contacted a lawyer, and I intend to fight to be the primary custodial parent. Thankfully, I live in an at-fault state, and obviously my almost ex-wife is at fault. I have a voice recording of her admitting to her affair with the guy that I've handed over to the lawyer. On top of the divorce being her fault, she's also technically unemployed due to the fact that she was a stay-at-home mom. Between the affair and her lack of a job, my lawyer is confident that I'll receive the custody arrangement that I want, as long as I'm able to acquire consistent childcare while I'm at work. This is easy because my company provides childcare for parents. It looks like I'll also be keeping our house and the dog. I guess it'll work out for me in the end. Anyway, my son and I are doing well, 
My sister's still here helping out. My dog is happy and settled back into his routine. To my knowledge, my ex-wife is staying with her scumbag boyfriend. I'm not a fan of this fact, but ultimately, it's not my business. As long as I have my little buddy, I'll be okay. I'll do my best to stay civil for the sake of my, our son. Thank you for all the advice and supportive words. I'm sorry your marriage ended this way, but I totally understand that it needed to end. Your STBXW completely threw away her marriage and betrayed her vows when she started an emotional affair with another man. I guess she got caught up in the fun of it, but how could she kiss another man in front of her three-year-old son? No wonder the poor baby's so confused about who his dad is. Divorcing her is the best thing you could do. And since you live in an at-fault state, it'll be better for you to keep the things you love. The things your STBXW threw away when she cheated on you, but hopefully you two can co-parent amicably. Good luck, OP. Story 2 I, 30 male, have been with my girlfriend 29 for over 4 years now, and I've always trusted that she wouldn't cheat on me. I love her very much, and we've built a life together. We bought a house together and now have a beautiful baby girl. We both have full-time jobs. My job requires that I often work long hours and sometimes I have to work a night shift. Her job is tough, but she's developed a strong working relationship with her coworkers and with some that has developed into friendships. Many of her coworkers are from the Philippines. This becomes relevant later. Back in January and February of 2017, me and my girlfriend were having a bit of a dry spell. In the entirety of those two months, we had sex three times. When I spoke to my girlfriend about it, she just said she wasn't feeling it at the moment. She was not interested in sex in general and had no sex drive. Okay, that's fair enough. I understand that and it could happen to anyone at any point. It's not an issue. Anyway, at the beginning of March 2017, we then had the wonderful news that we were pregnant with our first child. And in November that year, she gave birth to our beautiful little girl, who is the spitting image of me. All is going well, and we're all very happy. Tired, but happy. And that kind of lets you know where we were up until a couple of weeks ago. So, after I caught my girlfriend going through my phone, I decided to go through hers. I went through her Google activity log all the way to the end. And what I've found has made me suspicious, very suspicious. Firstly, her activity history was cleared in March of 2017. That's as far back as it went. Around the same time we found out she was pregnant. Secondly, between March and June of 2017, I found she googled multiple times, what do half Filipino, half white babies look like? Or some variation of that. While also googling, what's my conception date at the same time? She also googled a few times if there was a way of doing a paternity test while still pregnant. Obviously, I confronted her immediately. She told me she was googling it for one of her friends from work who had an affair with one of the Filipino guys from work. She thought she was pregnant by him. I do remember my girlfriend telling me that this friend thought she might have been pregnant. I don't remember when she said it to me, but it could have been around the time of the Google searches. I also don't know if that friend was actually pregnant or not, but she's not had a baby since then. I know that these two are always talking to each other on Messenger, so I asked if they had talked about it over Messenger. My girlfriend said they had, so I asked to see the conversation. This would obviously exonerate her if it corroborated her story. Unfortunately, she had deleted all the messages referring to an affair or a pregnancy. She did show me the conversation, and it had obvious holes in it from where messages had been deleted. I don't know her friends to go ask her, and how would that conversation go? Oh hi, you don't know me, but did you have an affair last year? That is basically where I'm at now. Should I believe her story or not? And if I don't, what should I do? Taking into consideration that we have a baby together that isn't half Filipino. Thank you for taking the time to read my post. You clearly don't believe her, OP. I don't think that approaching it backhandedly will solve anything or help your situation. I say be honest with her. You don't believe her. Her search history and messages are sketchy to you, and her snooping through her phone made you uneasy. Be honest. 
and tell her that you need help trying to move past this and go to couples counseling or talk to a neutral party together. More sneaking and lying is not the answer to sneaking and lying. Now for some comments. In my opinion, her Google history is not a good indicator that she's cheating. I'm on Google multiple times a day, often looking up bizarre and random stuff that just pops into my head. I've often thought that if someone were to snoop and look at my Google history, they would think I was mentally ill, lol. Having said that, I would recommend trying to keep your eyes and ears open regarding her actual behavior and not confront her about cheating unless you have irrefutable evidence. Good luck. I do find it odd that there were deleted messages and such. Why delete the messages if it's someone else's supposed affair? As for the Google searches, yeah, that's weird. But like many of the responses, we all search for weird random things. It's weird they're all about pregnancy and stuff, though. I mean, everyone has access to the internet. Her friend could have done it herself. And the friend didn't have a baby. Another odd coincidence. I'm not saying she's lying. I would find out some solid proof before you'd bring anything up. Just a lot of inconsistencies. Follow your gut. I often Google search images of murder victims, morbid I know, because I listen to murder podcasts and I want to put a face to the stories. I also once Googled cute teen boys with glasses and blue eyes because my friend and I were teasing her daughter about having a boyfriend. My friends and I often joke that we must be on some watch lists because of what we've Googled. I agree. A Google history search won't reveal anything reliable at all. You kind of just need to decide, do I trust her or do I not? Also, most people's history erases itself at intervals to make room for new cookies. So I doubt she's been deleting her history to hide something, or she would have probably deleted anything that could be construed as cheating like half Filipino baby or whatever.